from finance.yahoo.com. A crash in the dollar is coming from Stephen Roach with Bloomberg. Opinion. The era of the U.S. dollar's exorbitant privilege as the world's primary reserve currency is coming to an end. Then French finance minister Valérie Giscard d'Estaing coined that phrase in the 1960s largely out of frustration, bemoaning a United States that drew freely on the rest of the world to support its overextended standard of living. For almost 60 years, the world complained but did nothing about it. Those days are over. And I'm like, oh, wow, I love seeing this in black and white. See, I, mean, I hope it's in print somewhere. It's probably in all digital anyway now. Newspapers could be carriers of the coronavirus, so says Lord Bloomberg. Um, so the world complained about it, but did, now this is like, I do want to take a little bit of an issue with this. I think it's still beautiful that, uh, that Stephen here is pointing out the global ripoff that the Federal Reserve System has represented and what that has meant for the American people as citizens of the empire, that we have benefited from the U.S. dollar being the petrodollar, right? So many transactions around the world with oil and gas have, have to be done with the U.S. dollar. So many deals when with the foreign aid, you know, and they, this is a huge global manipulation racket centered around the U.S. dollar and the Federal Reserve System. And we generally don't appreciate how good we have it here in terms of standard of living compared to the rest of the world. Not quality of life. You know, you put up with government and the police state, you know, being an empire and the empire of angst and aggravation isn't exactly always a better life. But in terms of material benefits and creature comforts and money spent on us and resources that come to us from the rest of the world we're doing really well here why because we are the pampered citizens of the empire of the dollar now when he says for almost 60 years the world complained but did nothing about it those days are over there's i, I don't want to challenge this but i think there's one really important note that needs to be added to this narrative the world complained but did nothing about it. Why not? Because of the U.S. military, biggest in the world, bullying everybody into submission. Colonel Gaddafi, Libya, trying to get a gold black currency for Africa that would take a big chunk of the petrodollar's business. Oh, well, we'll turn a little uh, uprising in nearby Tunisia where the vendor let himself on fire and turn it into the Arab Spring and Gaddafi's out. And specifically in that, more than in uh, other episodes of the Arab Spring, there was significant U.S. military involvement, if you recall, Air Force, uh, in particular, helping out the uh, locals attempting to dispose Gaddafi, who ended up, can I say what they did? CJ, can I say something? Can I just, like, this is a matter of historical record. Am I allowed to even say graphic stuff on YouTube now? Like, you know what they did to him? I'll just say they violated him from the wrong end with a large knife. Like, it was, yeah. Is that enough without making it graphic? So, and yeah, it was the U.S. CIA and military that set that up. That's why you don't mess with the dollar empire. Although, now, ways around, opting out, maybe you can do it without getting killed. Already stressed by the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic, U.S. living standards are about to be squeezed as never before. And really, we're just starting to feel that. You know, it's servers, waiters, strippers, bartenders, uh, you know, people who, whose industries are just gen like movie theaters. You know, people in these sectors that are just kind of wiped out and, you know, coming back, but in, in a lot of ways, you know, there is going to be, remember we covered the story, it was uh, Bob Michelle with JP Morgan, one of their analysts saying that this unemployment crisis is going to take 10 years to recover from. I think we might get past it in some ways, but yeah, if, if the general foundations of the economy hold constant, yeah, it's, it's like it's going to take 10 years to work its way out of the system to really come back from that. 
And there's going to be, as we see, you know, family members leaning on each other. We're going to see a, we're gonna see a continual contraction of all the luxury goods markets, all the optional purchases, all of those things. There's going to be a, you know, kind of leveling, but a, a significant extended reduction in quality of life. At the same time, the world is having serious doubts about the once widely accepted presumption of American exceptionalism. Currencies set the equilibrium between these two forces, domestic econo economic fundamentals and foreign perceptions of a nation's strength or weakness. The balance is shifting and a crash in the dollar could well be in the offing. Maybe just a shakeup long overdue sparked by Corona. The seeds of this problem were sown by a profound shortfall in domestic U.S. savings that was glaringly apparent before the pandemic. Now, just a little conspiracy theory here to the side. Let's say, I mean, we know we know that these riots are, you know, and, and, and protests are, are to a certain degree fabricated, at least in the timing of them. I mean, there's genuine grassroots support. I'm not saying that. But, you know, putting out bricks, some of the, the money behind organizing, some of the money going to Antarctica. Tifa, you know, things like that. Uh, Russia could do this for it. And I hate to use Russia as the example, right? Mm -hmm. By the way, how big is Russia compared to the United States by the economy? One thirtieth to one fortieth, a tiny, tiny fraction. So in terms of economic power, we, we, you know, uh, insignificant compared to the United States. Military power, insignificant compared to the United States. But if they feel, or any other country feels particularly bullied by the dollar system, and they see COVID-19 as the opportunity. Like, think any country in the world that's going, you know what? We, we'd be better off with that. How much would it save us a year if we didn't have to use the U.S. dollar? How much? Billions. Like, there are plenty of trans... There's, there's that, it's that scale of money that's being skimmed off the top by the imposition of the dollar as the world reserve currency. So for a country like that to say, Oh, geez, you know what? Corona's kind of given us an opportunity. But if we, if everything else is calm and we're coming out of Corona, the United States could still wage war. But what if the United States was temporarily consumed with riots and domestic upheaval and then, like right now, could Trump, like, get away with the propaganda necessary to build the consent to be concerned with something else other than what's going on in America's streets right now to send troops abroad? Maybe not. And maybe if this is part of somebody else's bigger plan, they go, well, we're going to pull the plug on a chunk of the dollar and the United States is not going to be able to pay their troops. Right? I should say the U.S. government is not going to be able to pay the military. So, in the first quarter of 2020, net national savings, which includes depreciation adjusted savings of households, businesses, and the government sector fell to 1.4% of national income, the lowest reading since 2011, one-fifth the average of 7% from 1960 to 2005. Lacking in domestic saving and wanting to invest and grow, the U.S. has taken great advantage of the dollar's role as the world's primary reserve currency and drawn heavily on surplus savings from abroad to square the circle, but not without a price. In order to attract foreign capital, the U.S. has run a deficit in its current account, which is the broadest measure of trade because it includes investment every year since 1982. COVID-19 and the economic crisis it has triggered is stretching this tension between saving and the current account to the breaking point. The culprit exploding government budget deficits. According to the Bipartisan Congressional Budget Office, the federal budget deficit is likely to soar to a peacetime record of 17.9% of GDP in 2020 before hopefully receding to 9.8 in 21. A significant, yeah, hopefully, right? No, it's going to collapse first. A significant portion of it. Before it gets, no. Uh, so, I mean, that, that, do you see what huge, like the federal budget deficit, I mean, soar to a peacetime record 17.9% of GDP. I mean, there are all sorts of, like, can you imagine like a household budget, like borrowing that much you're talking about just this year, even if you are starting this year without any debt, you know, you're talking like 
the, the household equivalent of maxing out a few credit cards. And then hoping, oh yeah, we'll be able to pay, you know, we'll be able to get our rate of, of borrowing down to about half in, in less than a year. No. And remember, you know, not, not mentioned in, in this story is the potential for uh, a $10,000 monthly welfare check for basically every family in America. If that, you know, if the big COVID bill relief bill that they want passes, you know, 2000 for a person and their spouse and up to three children. A significant portion of the fiscal support has initially been saved by fear-driven unemployed U.S. workers. That tends to ameliorate some of the immediate pressures on overall national saving. However, monthly Treasury Department data show that the crisis-related expansion of the federal deficit has thus far outstripped the fear-driven surge in personal saving with the April deficit 5.7 times the shortfall in the first quarter or fully 50% larger than the April increment of personal saving. In other words, intense downward pressure is now building on already sharply depressed domestic saving. Compared with the situation during the global financial crisis when domestic saving was a net negative for the first time on record, averaging minus 1.8% of national income for the third quarter of 2008 to the second quarter of 2010, a much sharper drop into the negative territory is now likely possibly plunging into the unheard of minus 5 to minus 10% zone. That means that on average, Americans are pulling that much out of savings. Anybody know what that's like? Anybody been doing that lately? While you were waiting for your $1,200 stimulus check to arrive, you had to maybe sell some silver. You had to maybe cash out some Bitcoin. Then we're paying some bills. And that's stuff that's not even counted in this. This is just in the big official numbers that are trackable. And that is where the dollar will come into play. For the moment, the greenback is strong, benefiting from typical safe haven demand, long evident during periods of crisis. Against a broad cross-section of U.S. trading partners, the dollar was up almost 7% over the January to April period in inflation-adjusted trade-weighted terms to a level that stands fully 33% above its July 2011 low. Bank for uh, international sell settlements data show. Uh, uh, uh. But the coming collapse in saving points to a sharp widening of the current account deficit, likely taking it well beyond the prior record of 6.3% of GDP that it reached in late 2005. Reserve currency or not, the dollar will not be spared under these circumstances. The qu key question is, what will spark the decline? Look no further than the Trump administration. Protectionist trade policies. Funny how those all got kind of brushed to the side under COVID, you know, the, the general war with the trade. We went from a trade war to a bio war with China and forgot all about uh, how Trump was messing up imports and so many industries already with this. Withdrawal from the architectural pillars of globalization, such as the parent. Now, this is, you know, the economic stuff the, or the, uh, the, the, the political stuff like Paris Agreement on Climate, Trans-Pacific Partnership, World Health Organization, Crucial Atlantic Alliance's gross mismanagement of COVID-19 responses. Together with wrenching social turmoil not seen since the late 1960s are all painfully visible manifestations of America's sharply diminished global leadership. And this might provide for the opportunity for the other players in the world who might just be a little pissed off at President Trump to finally get together and say, we can overthrow the dollar empire. And it's incumbent upon all of us even those of us who are citizens of the empire to do our part and do as little business in the U.S. dollar as possible. Buy silver, buy gold, use Bitcoin.